neutron stars. These unique stellar remnants have been used widely by explorers ever since the advent of frameshift drive supercharging in late 3302, which quadruples your ship's range for a single jump. However, this feature is not without risk. Dropping from supercruise inside a neutron star jet cone is highly damaging to your ship and likely to result in its destruction. This guide will help you to use neutron stars safely, enabling you to cover great distances quickly and travel to faraway systems that would otherwise be unreachable. Before you even get to a neutron star, you should throttle down whilst in hyperspace. If you are using a keyboard or controller, hold the throttle down button for a few seconds. If you are using a HOTAS, simply move your throttle to the zero position. This is particularly important for neutron stars because their small size means you will drop out of hyperspace very close, 0.71 light seconds to be precise. Once you have arrived, look at the jet cones and determine which one is pointing towards you. You will be able to tell as it will cover a wider section of your field of view. In this case it is the right hand jet. To use this jet you will have to enter it whilst facing the star, which is very dangerous. Once you enter the jet you will lose control authority of your ship, meaning you could end up flying towards the star's exclusion zone and be unable to turn away. If you reach the exclusion zone boundary and are forced out of supercruise inside the jet cone, you will rapidly take catastrophic damage. It is difficult, but not impossible, to re-engage your frameshift drive and escape the jet cone. However, the hazardous environment is likely to breach your canopy, resulting in atmospheric failure. In the past, this would have meant certain death for an explorer in deep space, but the ability to synthesize life support now gives a chance of survival. Explorers using neutron stars should keep a good supply of iron and nickel for this purpose in case of such an emergency. Should you find yourself in this situation, immediately log out and head to the Repair Requests channel on the Fleetcom Discord server. Type mechanic preceded by an exclamation mark and the hull seals will do their utmost to ensure your safe return to a station. It is of course much better to avoid this scenario entirely. Therefore, you should always select the jet cone that is pointing away from you. Begin by flying directly towards the star, then turn past it and eventually parallel to the jet cone you intend to enter. The exclusion zone is actually very small, less than 0.15 light seconds, so you can get quite close before turning away. The exclusion zone boundary displays only very briefly on entry to the system and when approaching the star. The impact warning in the top right of the heads up display is a much more reliable indicator of whether or not your trajectory will clear the exclusion zone. Keep your speed below 20 million meters per second. Once you have cleared the star and begun to fly away from it, it is safe to enter the jet cone. It takes approximately 4 seconds to supercharge your frameshift drive. Therefore, you should not enter the jet cone too quickly, nor at too great an angle relative to the cone axis, or you may exit the cone before supercharging is complete and have to go around again. Reduce your speed to below 10 million meters per second and enter at a shallow angle. You must have your fuel scoop enabled to supercharge. Upon entering the jet cone, your cockpit voice assistant and heads up display will inform you that your frameshift drive is operating beyond safety limits. This is normal and is not a cause for alarm. You will also notice the loss of control authority, but this is not a problem because you are pointing away from the star and so there is no risk of you being knocked from supercruise by the exclusion zone boundary. Zero your throttle. You will actually stay at more or less constant speed. This will help you stay inside the jet cone for long enough to supercharge. Apply full throttle immediately upon receiving notification that your frameshift drive has supercharged. If you are in a large cone, it may not be possible to steer your ship out. In this case, simply wait to fly out the end. Check you are clear by confirming that you have regained full control authority, target the next system in your route and jump. 
Supercharging your frameshift drive causes it a small amount of damage. Your frameshift drive can suffer malfunctions if its integrity falls below 80%. For this reason, you should have an automated field maintenance unit equipped and ensure you use it regularly. This is a white dwarf, not a neutron star. Note the much larger stellar core and static jets. Supercharging from a white dwarf gives only a 50% range increase. Furthermore, their exclusion zones are much, much larger, so large that their jets barely protrude outside of them. It is very easy to clip the exclusion zone whilst attempting to supercharge. Many an unwary explorer has met an untimely death at the hands of a white dwarf jet cone. Given the significantly greater risk incurred for a measly range increase, they are best avoided. To exclude them from your routes, head to the star class filter and deselect them. You can have the route plotter automatically factor in frameshift drive supercharging. To do this, tick the Use Jet Cone Boosts option in the Route Plotting tab on the Galaxy Map. Alternatively, you can use the third-party Spanch tool, which is linked in the description below. One common use of neutron stars is to explore remote systems on the edge of the galaxy. The significant range increase brings within reach stars that we could not otherwise travel to. However, it is imperative that you confirm your intended route is reversible. If you jump to a system that requires a neutron supercharge to reach and there is no neutron star in that system, you will be stranded there with no way back. In such a situation there is no point in calling the fuel rats, no one can save you. Your only choice will be to self-destruct with the loss of your ship and all your exploration data. The route plotter will not tell you if it has generated a non-reversible route. Always confirm there is a viable return journey, noting that you may be able to get back by following a different route to the outbound trip.